It may be necessary to give oxygen to several patients from a concentrator or oxygen cylinder. To treat children in this way, bring them together in one area. By far the best way of giving oxygen to several patients from one oxygen cylinder or oxygen concentrator is to set aside part of the health centre or hospital as the oxygen administration area. Patients who need oxygen are moved to this area. This system allows the efficient use of concentrators or large oxygen cylinders. It's convenient for staff and protects the equipment as it's permanently set up and less likely to be damaged. It also concentrates the sickest patients in one area. When using an oxygen concentrator for more than one patient, a flow splitter is used to divide the oxygen flow. Up to four patients can be supplied with oxygen using this type of flow splitter. The amount of oxygen reaching the patient is controlled by colour-coded fixed flow nozzles. They are available for flows of 0.5 or 1 litre per minute. A 1 litre per minute nozzle should be used for oxygen therapy in young children aged 2 months up to 5 years. A 0.5 litre per minute nozzle should be used for oxygen therapy in young infants aged less than two months. The nozzles allow accurate oxygen distribution, even when the oxygen distribution tubing to the patients is of different lengths. Connect the flow splitter to the oxygen outlet on the concentrator. The flow splitter has four holes or ports. Carefully screw one nozzle onto each of the four holes. If you don't need four nozzles, block the spare holes using blanking plugs. Make sure that all the four ports have either a nozzle or a blanking plug. If you have four nozzles connected but need to treat less than four children, do not worry about the oxygen escaping from the spare nozzles it does not affect the flow through the nozzles being used to treat the children and does not increase the running cost. If you leave a port open without a nozzle or a blanking plug, the oxygen will escape through it and will not be routed through the other nozzles. When using an oxygen concentrator, the concentrator should be placed in a corner of the room and fastened to the wall with a strap or chain. Up to four lengths of five millimeter internal diameter, eight millimeter external diameter oxygen distribution tubing can be attached to the flow splitter nozzles. Fix the tubing by simple clips to the wall at eye level. It's important to ensure that the tubes are not kinked or damaged. Each of the four tubes can be up to 15 metres long and should end beside a bed or cot. Bubble humidifiers should be secured on brackets to the wall at this point, if required. A flow indicator should be attached to the end of the oxygen distribution tubing or to the outlet of the bubble humidifier. This safety device confirms that the oxygen flow to the individual patient exceeds 0.35 litres of oxygen per minute by showing a green band or a rotating vein. A red band appears or the vein stops rotating if the oxygen tube becomes blocked or kinked and the flow falls below this level. Connect the non-crush oxygen delivery tubing of the nasal prongs or a 2 metre length of non-crush oxygen delivery tubing if using a nasal or nasopharyngeal catheter to the flow indicator. Remember, if you treat only two or three patients using a concentrator, you must connect either a nozzle or a blanking plug to each unused port. If using an oxygen concentrator, you should always have an oxygen cylinder available as a backup. 
However, if the concentrator fails, do not attempt to attach a normal oxygen cylinder and regulator to the concentrator's flow splitter. The pressure is too high. Set up and use the oxygen cylinder in the manner described for supplying oxygen to patients from cylinders earlier in this video. If your hospital does not have a concentrator and cylinders are used as a source of oxygen, you can still deliver oxygen simultaneously to more than one patient. Bring the children to be treated together in one area and use a three or four way adapter to divide the oxygen flow. The adapter is connected to the oxygen regulator and gauge. A separate flow meter and humidifier must be used for each patient. The adapter is screwed carefully to the regulator and gauge. A flow meter can then be connected to each of the outlets of the adapter. Humidifiers, if required, should then be connected to each of the flow meters. These methods of assembly, using a three or four way adapter with an oxygen cylinder and a flow splitter with an oxygen concentrator, are the safest methods of administering oxygen to more than one child. Never use Y connectors to split the flow of oxygen to more than one patient. They do not allow the flow to be distributed equally and accurately. Use only a purpose-designed flow splitter with a concentrator or a three- or four-way adapter with a cylinder. It's important that oxygen, either from an oxygen cylinder or oxygen concentrator, is always available in hospitals so that it can be used continuously when needed. It's important that when oxygen is given to children with severe pneumonia, it's given continuously and not intermittently or for short periods. Nasal prongs, nasal catheters and nasopharyngeal catheters, when used correctly, are effective methods of delivering oxygen to children. Oxygen therapy can significantly reduce mortality from severe pneumonia in young children who show signs of hypoxia. When applied correctly, the skills and techniques shown in this video will help you to improve your hospital management of children with severe pneumonia who need oxygen therapy. The recommended equipment, such as that shown in use in this video, is described in the review paper. Oxygen therapy for acute respiratory infections in young children in developing countries. Prepared by the World Health Organization Division of Child Health and Development. And is available from the World Health Organization.